April 22nd, Dublin, Ireland. I didn't get all the time I wanted for warm-up, but still felt pretty good going out there. Very friendly crowd. Some people were spitting, but it didn't get to me. I'll play better tomorrow. We didn't go on till half past midnight. I was jet-lagging in the hotel room a few hours before the show. The pain of playing is a lot to get prepared for. I'm not as strong as the pain yet. I need a few more days. It's good to be back on the proving ground. April 25th, Manchester, England. Jet lag and gray skies. Rain and people hanging out, staring. I used the university gym today and was great. Tried to get a nap in, but I had to do an interview. So much for sleep. I played as hard as I could, but on stage sound was hard to deal with and I couldn't hear anything. On this tour, we're doing nothing but new material. People really seem to like it. It feels good that people are getting off on the new stuff we're doing. I'm trying to be nice to the people that come up to me for autographs. I'm getting a little better at it. Depression is ever-present when I'm here. I can't wait to get out of this country. But the people here are great, and it makes it worthwhile. April 27th, Newcastle, England. A couple of people got wasted in Belfast right after we were there. Kurt Cobain's death looms large in England. His face is on the cover of several magazines. Black voters getting terrorized as they wait to vote in South Africa. Depression lifted for a few moments yesterday. It was a day off in Manchester. My writing is nothing but a document. I have nothing to write about except this endless black cloud that hangs over me. Got in a good workout today. The place was full of strong, hard bastards. Had a great time playing tonight. People were great. Stage was small, my feet kept slipping, but what the hell. On the way back to the hotel, I watched the boarded-up buildings pass by. England is really depressing. April 30th, Bristol, England. Good gig. Sound on stage was good for a change. I played hard. Some fat, ugly woman tossed her drink at me, and I hit her with some good lines that she took very well. Here's one of them. As gross and as bovine as you are, I'm sure there's some guy desperate enough to sleep with you. After the show, I listened to this drunk idiot talk to me for a while until he finally went away. People make me hate more and more. You try to be cool to them, and all they do is take more. People getting in my face outside the bus with a million drunk questions. Finally, one of them asked why I was being so nice. That woke me up. I walked through them onto the bus and shut the door. The hell with them. If you let them get close, they ruin it all. They have the capacity to cheapen any experience there is. I must avoid people more than ever now. They depress me. May 2nd, London. Played right through them. Didn't give them an inch. Never do in this town. We opened with volume four. It was great. I had a blast playing. I gave it all I had. I saw the singer from the Happy Mondays. He looked like warmed over death. They should make a poster with his face on it and say something about how bad drugs are. He's barely the living proof. May 4th, Leicester, England. Last show for now. No barriers tonight. The audience was right up close. Body ached all through the set. Looking forward to getting out of here. I'm exhausted. May 11th, New York. I love playing in this town. The last few nights have been great. Our opening band has been a band from Ireland called Therapy. Fantastic band, great people. I wish they could tour with us the whole year. They never complain, they play great every night, and it's good to be around people who really want to play. May 20th, Chicago, Illinois. Hellish neighborhood. Had to do interviews and photo sessions all day. I wanted to throw up. I don't like photo sessions anymore. I never liked them much anyway, but now they make me nervous and impatient. The gig was good and we gave it all we had. I don't know what else to say. I escaped through the front of the club and into a cab while all these people waited for me near the bus. Ha! Fooled ya. May 22nd. I have to get in an airplane and go from Los Angeles to Auckland, New Zealand. Should take about 12 or 13 hours. And then I get a day off and then we start playing. The last time I was in Auckland, it was nothing but a bunch of drunks showing up for two days to hurl abuse at us. I hope this time is better. May 26, Melbourne, Australia. 9.30 in the morning, start in on the skin-peeling press. Thinking of the gig while I'm talking to all these people with their cameras and their Walkmans. I still have to do the show after all this is over. It makes me feel like throwing up. They don't have to do it, so they don't know. They scraped six hours of press off my back today. Went to sound check. Eyes burning. Feeling nauseous. Lonely. 
Still got to play. 3,500 people showed up. The stage was nothing but feedback. I don't know how it was. I was too busy trying to find a place on the stage that wasn't howling. Great crowd, though. Now I'm back in the moist insecticide hotel room. Knee and throat burning. I don't know how I do this. I feel good when I'm alone. I'm the only person I feel comfortable around anymore. June 6th, 7.17 a.m. West Coast time, en route to USA. I'm in an airplane, about ten and a half hours into the flight. Feeling pretty good. I feel good because it's almost over and it wasn't too bad. Not looking forward to all the work I have to do today and the way I'm going to feel about 12 hours from now and the fact that I have to leave the next day for five shows. I'll get some good work done and try and get in a good workout and I'll try to be happy. My one day off before I start five shows happens to be Monday. I'll get back to my office right in time for all the guys to come in and a normal pedal to the metal work day to start. I will try and do 12 to 14 hours of work on 12 hours of sleep, sleep for four hours and then get on a plane to Las Vegas, Nevada and play. I've got to deal with all the phone calls and all the faxes that came in while I've been in Australia. Say yes or no to about two or three different galleys and work on the endlessly unfinished Black Flag book. I look forward to this about as much as I look forward to drinking a quart of paint. June 7th, Las Vegas, Nevada. This town is disgusting. Nothing but a bunch of fat losers. Japanese tourists and other people going to lose their money in these places that just laugh and rip you off. An entire state dedicated to stealing from your pockets. Anyone who gambles is an idiot. I watch, I laugh. I got out of the cab and looked at the venue. They were still building the front of it. I walked in and looked at the PA system. Our practice rig is bigger than this. It's going to be a disastrous show. We played. We heard nothing. People watched. I have no idea what they thought of the show. I got in. I got out as soon as possible. I hate this town. I've always hated this town. I played here once before, ten years ago, and watched the audience throw beer bottles at the meat puppet's head. Never coming back here again. June 12th, San Diego, California. For the last three days, we've been playing radio festivals down the Californian coast. We've been playing with Beck, The Pretenders, James, Green Day, Toad, The Wet Sprocket, The Violent Femmes, The Church, and a bunch of bands I can't remember. I don't want to sound like a snob, but if the way of music is going the way of these bands, maybe it's time for me to do something else. No testosterone, no presence, no reason to be on stage, simpering, apologetic, wimpy musicians, and their nowhere bland pop music. And then there was us. I think it's time to go do something else. Like rock out. See ya. Some people say I'm nasty, some say I have my moods, but I think I'm fantastic, cause I'm so fucking rude. I was upstairs in my bedroom, trying on my new brown coat, when a man came knocking on the door who had from the electricity board. Well, I thought about letting him inside, but I wasn't moving fast. We'd only been there half an hour when he pushed his way right past. I said, fuck off! Who do you think you are? Get out of my fucking flat! What do you mean you want to read the meat and don't talk to me like that? Well, he left in a right fucking up because he'd hurt his fucking hand. Knocking out me two front teeth, a cheeky fucking bastard. Picking up the bits of teeth when the landlord came around. He said, you owe me rent for the last ten weeks, £450. But if you're sure, don't sweat it, son, you can take your time to pay. So I grabbed his nuts, spat in his eyes, said, what you fucking say? Fuck off! Who do you think you are? Get out of my fucking flat! What you mean you want your fucking rent? Don't talk to me like that! Well, he left me an eviction note and a badly battered eye. Just because I told him that I hoped he fucking died. 
Cursing the day I moved into the place the scummy fucking died And nursing my badly battered face when my two flat mates arrived So I sat dead smoking to change the locks while they went out for bread As one climbed in through the window I slammed it on his head and said Fuck off! Who you think you are? Get out of my fucking flat! What you mean you live here? Don't talk to me like that! Fuck off! Who you think you are? Get out of my fucking flat! Fuck off! Who you think you are, you cheeky fucking twat? Think you are? Get out of my fucking flat! What you mean you live here? Don't talk to me like that! <laughs>